four years ago, I lived in a very small one-bedroom house with one of my best friends. We couldn't afford anything bigger, so that's why we settled with a one-bedroom. I slept on the futon in the living room, and my friends slept in the actual bedroom. This happened around fall time, when it was just starting to get cold out. My friend had taken a few days to go visit his sister a few hours away, so I was the only one at the house. This was over the weekend too, so I got to spend both entire days enjoying having the space to myself. It's not that I didn't like having him around, but it was just nice to not be crammed together in a tiny house for once. Anyway, on Sunday night, I went out to pick up some groceries and got home around 7 or so. I had to work the next day, but given the unusual circumstances, I decided to stay up a little bit later and watch a movie. I must have stayed there on the couch for at least an hour, almost finishing the movie up, when there was a quiet thump from just down the hallway. I looked over and didn't really see anything. I figured it was just the house making some noises. I kept on with my movie. For the next 30 minutes, there were no other sounds, so I thought the thump was completely insignificant. It had fully left my mind once the movie was over. I went to fill up my water bottle and went back to the futon, pulling it out into a bed and laying down. I was on my phone for a while and fell asleep sometime around 11 or so. When I woke up, my eyes felt real heavy, and my vision was blurry as well. I wasn't sure what had woken me up, but I knew it was sometime late in the night. I rubbed my eyes a bit and looked over at the clock, when a very faint sound came from the other side of the house. It was wood creaking, like someone was carefully walking across the floorboards. My eyes widened immediately, and I snapped fully awake. My heart rate started rising. I got off the futon and crept over to the hallway. The creaking had stopped, but looking down that hallway, I got this horrifying feeling. I walked down until I reached the door to my friend's bedroom. I leaned against it and listened in. It was perfectly quiet, not even a sound coming from the house itself. I slowly twisted the door handle and pushed it open a few inches, scanning my eyes across the room. I continued to open the door wider. It looked empty, but I quickly noticed how messy the room was. There were things scattered all around the floor and bed. Confused, I took a step inside and flicked on the light. Instantly from the corner of my eye, I saw a figure move away from the gap between the closet door. I jumped out of that room and slammed the door shut. I ran to grab my phone. I heard the closet door opening and footsteps going into the hallway. Once I'd grabbed my phone, I ran to the back door. I saw a large man charging down the hallway toward me. I got out and went through the backyard, but the man didn't attempt to follow me outside. A minute later, I got to an area I felt was safe and called the police. They arrived fairly quickly and searched the house, but they ultimately found nothing useful. We couldn't figure out who the man was or why he was even there. They also weren't entirely sure how he'd gotten in in the first place. It's likely that he'd broken in while I was away getting groceries that night, but there were no signs of forced entry. My friend was just as terrified as I was once I told him everything. We eventually moved out of the house together. Hopefully, we never have to encounter that man again. Last year, my roommate moved out of the house. We had been renting together for the past four years. By then, both of us had gotten better jobs and were getting paid much more. The house we lived in wasn't the best, so it was only a matter of time before one of us moved out to get their own place. After he moved, though, I was able to use more of the space in the house and actually just decided to stay there for another year or two. 
This happened during that time, sometime in early December. Our area was going through a week of some pretty bad snowstorms, and the office I worked at allowed us to work from home for a few days, if we wanted to. Obviously, I chose to take them up on that offer. I used my old roommate's bedroom as an office and worked all throughout the day. At one point while I was working, though, there was a knock at the front door. I left the room to check who this was. There was a man on the porch in a heavy winter jacket. He didn't seem to be a worker or a delivery person of any kind, just some regular old Joe. I opened the door, getting hit by a rush of snow and wind. Uh, yeah? How can I help you? The man smiled and apologized for interrupting my day. He explained his situation. He said his car had gotten stuck in the snow right on the side of the road next to my house, and he didn't have a phone on him. He asked if he could borrow mine to call someone for help. Obviously skeptical, I told him to give me a moment. I then closed my door and went to the other side of the house. I looked out the window at the road he was supposedly stuck on. There was a small SUV out there that looked like it had slidden on some ice onto the curb and gotten stuck in the snowbank. Now that I was pretty sure he was not lying about that, I grabbed a jacket and put on some shoes. Then I went back to the front door. I was still a bit skeptical, of course, but I stood on the porch with him as he used my phone to call his brother, just so that if he tried to run with it or anything, I could chase after him and prevent him from leaving. After a quick call, the man simply handed my phone back and thanked me, then walked away. I went inside and checked out the window, seeing the man getting in his car. Thinking everything had been settled and resolved quite peacefully, I went back to the office and started working again. Around 7 o'clock or so, I felt like I'd done enough for the day and took the rest of the night off. It was then that I remembered about that man in his car from earlier. I went to check and see if he'd gotten the help he needed and was surprised to find that car was still there. I could see the man moving around inside of it. It had been almost three hours by then, which made me wonder how he was still stuck there. Maybe he was waiting for his brother to get off work and pick him up or something? I didn't know. I went to the kitchen and made some dinner, then sat down on the couch to watch some TV. I stayed up until about 9.30, then went upstairs to shower and get ready for bed. I turned the water on and hopped in the shower, but after a few minutes, there was a sudden and abrupt banging on the front door. It was loud and harsh, and completely jump-scared me. I was put into a fear-induced frozen state for a moment. The banging was so hard it was actually shaking the walls. Even across the entire house I could still hear that it was coming from the front door. They were hitting it non-stop. I could even hear them aggressively shaking the door handle. It was such a sudden burst of chaos that I wasn't sure what to make of it. I turned off the shower and quickly got dressed, but as I left my room and walked down the hallway, everything stopped altogether. It was now completely silent. No more sounds at all. I stopped in place, hearing only the wind from outside and feeling a bit of eeriness set in. I slowly walked downstairs and up to the front door. Nobody was there anymore. I quickly ran to the window and saw that car was still there. The man was no longer inside of it, though. Not knowing what was going on, I simply decided to call the police. When they came, they noticed multiple sets of shoe prints in the snow, but they were covered up by the storm soon after. They took the license plate of the car, though, and found a picture of the owner. From what I could tell, it was the same guy I'd helped on my porch. In the following days, they waited for him to return, but as far as I know, he never did. It's really disturbing to think about what could have happened that night right outside my door. Was it that same man desperately trying to get in for some reason? Or was it someone with malicious intent? It seems that most people I've told this story, including the police, think the man was running from someone and trying to get help. 
but what happened afterwards is very much up for debate. Nothing is really known about where that man is now, or what he was running from. They're just a few questions on a long list that will probably never be answered. I'm a 23-year-old woman, but this event took place when I was 15. Growing up, my mom was an addict, and my dad was absent. My mom's boyfriend was abusive too. Fighting, screaming, and chaos was all typical of Dave, my mom's boyfriend at the time. He was deep into drugs as well as my mom, and there'd be random strangers constantly coming in and out of the house at all hours of the day. Due to the absence of any proper guardianship, I'm sure you can guess that I ended up in with the wrong crowd by age 13. I was sneaking out to meet boys, drinking, smoking, and doing other things a typical 13-year-old kid should never do. When I was 15, I met this guy named Tyler. I'm using his real name because fuck him. We met one night when me and a few friends were trying to find someone to buy us alcohol. Being stupid teenagers, we would usually just ask strangers who were going into the store. Tyler was the first person we'd asked that night. He said yes and got our drinks for us, then met us in the parking lot where we were waiting for him. He asked us where we were headed and what we were getting into tonight. One of my friends, who we'll call Sarah, told him we were just hanging out and walking around. We lived in a big city with lots of busy streets, so we'd usually just kind of walk around until we found something that caught our interest. On this night, it was already past 10 p.m. Everywhere was closing and the roads were emptying quickly as well. Tyler then invited us to join him in his car and drive around. Us being stupid kids went with him. Sarah and our other friend who we'll call Kate sat in the back together. I was up in the front passenger seat. At the time, I was really excited to sit by him. I thought he was a hot older guy with a car. I was way too naive to realize this guy was actually a creep. At first, I thought the drive was quite fun. He took us along a back road that went alongside a river with trees and railroad tracks on the other side. He drove fast and had his music turned up so loud it was shaking the entire car. He started smoking a blunt and we all joined in on it. Honestly, it was a good time. I didn't see the danger I was putting myself in, or the reckless behavior of this mysterious man that we'd just left with. I'd been sipping on my drink during the drive. At one point, he told me to chug it, which I stupidly did. I was only a 92-pound child, so inevitably I got blasted. That night is pretty faded in some parts. I remember him placing his hand on my thigh throughout the drive. I didn't mind in that state of mind because I really thought I liked him. By the end of the night, Sarah and Kate had to head off home, and Tyler said he'd drop us all off at the store we'd met at before. I got out of the car and he asked me for my phone number. I gave it to him and he kissed me before I got out. I started walking home with my friends. The rest of the night completely blurs out. The next morning, when I checked my phone, I had a text from him. It said something along the lines of, I want to see you again. I had a real good time. Again, being a naive 15-year-old, I was very happy about this. The following weekend, we all met up again, and he bought us some more drinks. We went for a ride, and he drove fast and played loud music. We smoked and drank again, except this time he grabbed my hand the entire time. This became our routine quickly. He'd pick us up nearly every weekend for months on end. Tyler and I eventually began dating, even though I knew nothing about him. He'd never talk about himself, because all we'd do was drive and listen to loud music. Again, I didn't see an issue with it. I thought this man was awesome until this happened. 
One of the weekends we were all supposed to meet, I got a text from him, asking if it could just be me and him this time. Luckily, my instincts actually kicked in, and I told him I wasn't feeling well. I didn't want to ditch my friends. They were already on their way to meet me. The night went on as normal, us girls hanging out on my porch and gossiping, when suddenly his car drove really slowly past my house. He didn't stop, but instead kept going down the road. Immediately, I got a kind of weird feeling. Within two minutes, I'd received a message from him. Why did you lie to me? I replied. I'm not lying, they just came to bring me some snacks. They were checking in on me, you know? I was definitely continuing to lie. I remember him getting really upset. He should be the one to bring me things. He should be the one to check up on me. I was feeling a little guilty until Kate asked me, Hey, has he been here before? How did he know where you live? That's when my brain finally started to think, Hey, something's not right about that. Obviously, we always met him at the store. He'd never picked me up or dropped me off at my house, and we'd never talked about where we lived. I texted him again. I asked him how he knew where I was. He played it off like he'd accidentally stumbled down my street and just so happened to be driving very slowly by my house specifically. Whatever. I didn't reply. I had been distracted by my friends. Eventually, they left and I went back inside getting ready for bed. I showered, brushed my teeth, turned on the TV. The sounds of whatever my mom and her people were doing downstairs in the basement were ringing throughout the house. I remember waking up at 4.12 a.m. I checked my phone to see what time it was. I'd been woken up by a notification text from Taylor. Hey, can you meet me? It was sent just shortly ago. I texted back telling him I was sleeping, but he insisted on seeing me. I had to firmly reply no before turning my phone on do not disturb. I went back to sleep. When I woke up that morning and turned my phone off do not disturb, texts started to flood in as well as missed calls. All from Tyler as I'm sure you guessed, hundreds of them. I read each one as they flooded through my screen. Noticing his attitude and tone changed throughout the night. He started off saying he missed me and wanted to see me. Later on, he was calling disgusting names and threatening me. I had 20 missed calls from him as well. My heart sank to my stomach when I noticed a photo of him. It was a selfie of him holding a weapon to his head. He was smiling with his eyes wide open. It scared me so bad that I texted him back which I'm sure was his goal. I told him I was sorry for falling asleep, and I didn't mean to ignore him. Can we meet now? Was his only response. I was beginning to feel a little creeped out and threatened by him, obviously, so I declined. I told him I didn't think this was going to work out. I blocked his number. I really thought that would be the end of whatever this was. I simply moved on from it. I'd basically forgotten all about him, and it was just a memory to me now. Weeks had passed by when I got a message request from an account on Facebook I didn't recognize. I accepted it to see what they'd say. It was a picture of the outside of my house. My heart felt like it had stopped, and I felt the color rush from my face. I knew immediately this must be Tyler. I messaged them back and told them to leave me alone, or I'd tell my stepdad. I didn't hear anything for the rest of the day until late that night. It was around 11 and I was home alone for the night. My mom and her man had gone to the cinema. I got a message, another photo. I remember feeling nervous and scared. I opened the message. It was a picture of me sitting on the edge of my bed looking at my phone. It was in my previous day's outfit. He had taken a photo of me the night before. That creep had been watching me from outside my window just last night. I didn't even realize he was there. I immediately began to panic, not knowing how to handle this situation on my own. My phone got another message. Come outside, he said. I was frozen. I didn't know if he was trying to scare me or what his intentions were, but I knew this was not good. I didn't reply. I was too scared to even move. 
I was completely frozen. Another message came in. Hey, I'm at your front door. I checked my ring camera, and sure enough, there he was standing right on my front porch, phone in hand. He was typing something out as I watched. I was so scared that I called the police, and they told me to stay in my room and lock my door. The whole time, he continued telling me to come out and meet him. I even heard him try to get in a few times. After about five minutes of complete and utter terror, I heard the police sirens nearing my house. I felt a rush of relief come over me, because I knew this was almost over. To my surprise, he actually stayed, and they took him away in handcuffs. He's still doing time for all the crimes they caught him in. They found weapons, sex toys, drugs, and a gun in his car, along with all the messages he'd sent me. They charged him extra for me being a minor. When I finally found out his age, it made me sick to even think of it. He was almost 30 years old at that time. I was 15. My mom eventually went to rehab and is doing much better. We moved away from that city, and I'm now engaged to a wonderful and loving man. We have a child on the way. My life has gotten a lot better, and I'm happy now, but I can't help but feel an overwhelming amount of fear whenever I think of Tyler. Will he try to find me again when he's released? Will he still be obsessed with me? Or will he do this again to another naive child? Girls and boys out there, please hang out with people your own age. Don't do what I did. Be sure to listen to your parents when they tell you not to talk to strangers. And stay safe out there. I own a janitorial business that specializes in cleaning office buildings for mid to large size companies. Due to the nature of the job, we start our shifts at 6 p.m. on weekdays because most offices don't want us inside during business hours while all their employees are still working. On this day, I got to the scheduled office building at 6.30, putting in the keypad passcode and getting all my equipment in, then locking the doors behind me. The building was only two stories, which was much smaller than most, but both floors were really big. There was also a smaller basement level. I started on the second story and wanted to work my way down. I went around grabbing all the trash, grabbing anything off the floor that would get in my way, and then tied up the bags and brought them out to the dumpsters at the back of the building. While I was out there, though, I noticed two parked cars. Neither of them were on, but what was really odd about this was that this was the only building nearby, and supposedly nobody was supposed to be here right now. I just didn't know why they would be parked out back of the building, or where the person could even be if not in their cars. I went back inside and double-checked that all the doors were locked up, I continued on with my work, but occasionally checked out the windows to see if there were any changes with the vehicles out there. Everything seemed to be the same. I finished up with the top floor and moved my way down to the first floor, doing the same process. This time, when I went out to toss the trash in the dumpster, though, I noticed a single light was on in one of those vehicles. Almost as soon as I stepped outside, it turned off. Something about this made me uneasy. I quickly tossed everything and went back inside. Seeing that someone was actually in there made it even more odd. I tried to work faster, finishing the floor by 11 p.m. That was much quicker than the previous one. Now it was just the small basement level and I'd be all done. I moved everything down and got to work. This level was mostly full of boxes it was more of a storage warehouse area. While I was down there, I heard a thud echo through the building. It had come from one of the floors above me. I couldn't tell much of what the sound was or on what floor it was either. All I knew was that it came from above. I put down my things and started walking up the steps. I stopped halfway through 
when I heard voices coming down the upper hallway. Two men were talking back and forth at a regular volume, like they weren't even afraid of me being in there. I slowly crept back down the stairs and moved behind one of the boxes. I went to dial 911. Before I had the chance to say anything though, the footsteps began making their way down to the basement. I only saw the man's shadow on the wall. Before I completely hid myself behind the shelf of boxes, I heard him walk around and then yell upstairs to the other man. Hey, I don't see him, I think we're good. He walked up the steps and I peered out one more time, seeing this shadow. I could tell he was holding something small in his hand. I reconnected with 911 and explained what I could. I waited there for several minutes. During this time, the men were mostly on the top floor, then moved back down to the first. Suddenly, one of them yelled, Hey, the van is still here! Both of their footsteps started rushing around, but not leaving. They were clearly looking for me. It was hard to control and quiet down my breathing, hearing them running and searching through the building, moving things around right above me. Their footsteps rushed down to the basement stairs as one of them began throwing boxes around, looking everywhere. The sounds of sirens approaching caught the other man's attention, who alerted the one in the basement. Both of them ran away. I stayed hidden until an officer came down to get me. It took two hours for the suspects to get apprehended. They declined to share why they'd broken in but a few stolen items were found in their cars. It's safe to say they weren't the smartest, as they seemed to just guess whether I'd left rather than start by looking for my van to see if I was still there. Regardless, them not leaving after finding out I was inside was probably the scariest thing I'll ever experience. Thankfully, I didn't have to find out what would have happened if they'd found me. I live in Irvine, California, which if you don't know is the safest large city over 200,000 people in the United States. My whole life I was never worried about a break-in or anything like that until one horrifying day. I was lying in bed on a Saturday morning, sleeping in. Suddenly, my dad sprinted into the room and handed me a wooden baseball bat. He was completely out of breath. Don't leave this room, and don't let anyone touch you. At this point, I was scared shitless. My 12-year-old mind could only imagine what was coming at me. I backed into my closet and clutched that bat for dear life. All of a sudden, the doorbell rang. I just about jumped out of my skin. I was shaking beyond imagination. For all I knew, our house was being raided. Little did I know that wasn't far from the truth. My dad had been outside early in the morning, working in the yard like he usually did. All of a sudden, a young man came around the corner sprinting. He dropped some sort of bag into the bushes and didn't notice for a moment. My dad went over and grabbed it from the bush. The boy turned back around and saw my dad holding it. The boy got in a panic and kept running. Well, apparently it was a bag full of drugs. My dad calmly walked inside and put that bag down. He decided to wait a bit and call the police. He returned outside and started to work again. All of a sudden around the corner came two large SUVs. Out jumped six men all with guns in hand. That's the point my dad sprinted inside to call the police and hand me the bat. Then the doorbell rang. Of course we didn't answer it. We waited for the police to arrive. The police never found any of the guys, but that was definitely the scariest moment of my life. We live in a rural neighborhood with several other houses within sight. Lots of woods and fields around though. Nearly everyone except for me owns dogs that they let run loose around the neighborhood. The day before this occurred, 
a stray collie had showed up in the area, taking up residence on my front porch, alternately playing and fighting with the local dogs. It was two days before Christmas. My husband had made a last-minute decision to spend Christmas with his ailing grandparents, 1,200 miles away. It was impossible for me to accompany him, so I was going to be spending the next week alone. We were rarely apart overnight, so I was having a difficult time falling asleep without him. I was almost about to drift off on the wee morning hours of Christmas Eve when I heard footsteps on the front porch. For context, my bedroom is right adjacent to that area, and my headboard is about five feet away from the front door on the other side of the wall. In my sleepy state, when I heard those footsteps, my first thought was that my little brother must be stopping by for a late night chat. The stray collie, still on the porch, started barking and growling. My sleep-fogged brain finally remembered that my brother always came to the back door, not the front. I sat up and listened in closer. The dog was barking fiercely now, growling and snarling in a way that made chill bumps stand up on my arm. There was a scuffle, and the dogs around the neighborhood started echoing the dog's bark, more growling and snarling, then a sudden silence. I laid there for a moment. For some reason, I was so tired that I decided it must have been a bunch of dogs fighting on the porch, and they had fought with that young collie. I eventually fell asleep from exhaustion. The next morning when I woke up and went into the living room, the window next to the front door was open about two feet, and the screen had been removed. The stray collie was nowhere to be found either. What is up guys, Blue Spooky here. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you liked the video, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. If you have any feedback for me as well, be sure to leave that in comments below the video. If you guys have a story you'd like to send in, or if you'd like to contact me for any reasons, there will be links to my social media in the description below the video, including my Facebook, Gmail, and Twitter accounts. Go ahead and send me a message on any of those, and I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. If you do decide to send in a story, please be sure to include in the tagline what the name of the story is if it has one, what type of story it is if it has one, and how you'd like to be credited in the description below the video. Please make sure to include as much detail as you feel comfortable with and try to use as much proper grammar as possible to make sure you have the highest chance of appearing in a future video. Overall, I think that's pretty much it for now guys, so thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.